Suzume, a high school second year, has a weird dream, where she sees a scene from her childhood. She's in a snow-filled area with no one else around. She sees herself as a small child, and she is hugging a chair and is all alone. She wakes up and bikes to school where she passes a young man in his early 20s. She stares at him because she finds him good-looking, and she feels like she's seen him before. They pass each other, and he stops her and asks her if she's seen a door nearby. Of course, she doesn't know what he's talking about. Then he says, is there an abandoned building or area nearby? And she says there is an abandoned area around an old onsen nearby. He thanks her and walks away. She bikes to school but stops, and for some reason is compelled to go find him. She goes to the area she directed him to, but she doesn't find him there. In the ruins of the old community, she enters what's left of an old onsen. There is water pooled on the ground, and she sees a door and door frame in the middle of the onsen ruins. It looks completely out of place, so she walks toward it and opens the door. On the other side, she sees a celestial star-filled night sky and a grassy hill. She walks through it, but she ends up on the other side of the door frame in the onsen. It seems like she can see the other side of the door, but can't walk into that world. On the floor, she nearly trips over a weird stone statue. She picks it up, and it looks like an ancient statue of a cat. Suddenly, the statue turns into a drenched white cat. Startled, she lets go, and the cat runs away. Freaked out, she runs away and goes to school, leaving the door open. She gets back to school, and her friends tease her for being late. During lunchtime, she looks out the classroom window and sees smoke in the mountains. She points it out to her friends, saying there might be a fire. Her friends look out, but say they don't see anything. And the smoke has turned into a large pillar of smoke, taking the shape of a cylindrical tube. She sees that the red-black smoke is pouring out of the door she left open, and the man she passed by that morning is trying his best to close it. The force is so strong that he's thrown onto his back. Suzume goes to help him up, and he tells her to run away, as it's too dangerous. The man runs to the door and tries to close it again. Instead of running away, Suzume throws herself against the door. The man chants some phrases, incantation, and the key he wears around his neck starts to glow. Finally, the two shut the door and a magical lock appears. The man shoves his key into the lock and turns it. The smoke disappears and things are normal again. The man's arm is bleeding, as it seems he was cut during the commotion. Suzume takes him to her home and bandages him up, saying it'd be very hard to explain what happened at a hospital. They introduce themselves and he explains that it's his job to travel Japan and find those turns and return them, or else the world will end. He says the doors appear in places that people have abandoned, it's a job that's been passed down in his family, so he has no choice but to do it. Suddenly, a cute white cat appears at Suzuma's window. She brings it food and water. Then, suddenly, it speaks and tells Suzume that it loves her. The cat looks at the man, Soda, and says he's in their way. The cat, which they call Daijin, minister, in the rest of the film, turns Soda into Suzume's childhood baby chair. As the chair, Soda can talk as normal and move the chair's legs as if they were his own. The cat runs away and the two chase it all the way onto a boat that is headed for Ahime. During the chase, people see a chair moving on its own, chasing a runaway cat, and the images blow up on social media. On the boat, the cat says he will open more and more gates around Japan and then jumps off the ferry onto a faster, smaller boat. Since they can't chase him anymore, they decide to get something to eat on the boat. Suzume's auntie, her guardian, asks where she is, and Suzume lies, saying she's staying at a friend's house for the night and not to worry. Her auntie is angry and tells her to come home ASAP. On the boat, Suzume enjoys a cheap meal while Soda watches, as he can't eat and doesn't get hungry while he's in chair form. In the morning, Suzume looks at her phone and sees that photos of the cat have blown up on social media, and they can use them to track where the cat is. Soda tells Suzume to get on the next ferry home and that he can handle the rest on his own. Suzume declines and says people will get suspicious. It'll cause trouble if there is a walking chair moving around in public. He reluctantly agrees and accepts Suzume's help. The two start walking up a road along a mountain, and Suzume hears a motorbike approaching from behind. The motorbike seems to be delivering crates of oranges and passes them by without noticing them. Suddenly, one of the crates of oranges comes loose and falls off the bike. The oranges roll down the mountain towards Suzume and Soda. The driver, Chika Amabe, is a high school girl about the same age as Suzume. However, in the distance, Soda sees the distinct smoke clouds of the Mimizu rising on a distant mountain and says she doesn't understand what Suzume is doing here, but knows she's in hurry and will take her wherever she needs to go. Suzume points Chika in the direction of the smoke, and when they arrive in the general area, there are lots of road closure signs along a crumbling street. 
Do not enter signs line the road as well. Suzume runs off with Sota in her hands. Sota jumps and runs down the mountain toward an abandoned school building. Sota sees the Mimizu has come out of the abandoned school and tries his best to push the sliding door closed. Sota says she needs to be the one to seal this door. He tells her to close her eyes and she'll be able to hear and see the people who used to live here. She'll be able to see their memories. Suzume doesn't fully understand, but she does as he asks and she closes her eyes. She starts to see a hazy image of students coming to the school and entering the door she is trying to shut. She hears them talking. The key starts glowing, and finally Soda and her are able to shut the door. The magic lock appears, and she shoves the key into the lock and turns it. The door is sealed, and the two celebrate. Suddenly the cat appears and starts to admire Suzume's efforts. Soda yells at the cat and asks him to turn him back into his normal body. Chika offers Suzume a place to stay for the night, and Suzume agrees. It turns out Chika's family owns a ryokan, and they let Suzume stay in Chika's room as a thank you for saving the oranges and in exchange for helping out with the chores. Chika calls Suzume, telling her dinner is ready, and she asks Sota if he'll be okay on his own. He says he doesn't get hungry in this body, so she should go enjoy herself. After dinner, Chika and Suzume clean the onsen. Before bed, the two chat more, and Chika asks Suzume what she's really doing all this way from her home. Suzume doesn't know how to respond, and Chika says it's okay if it's something she can't talk about. She says she was thankful that Suzume came along. She hadn't been to her old high school in a while, and seeing it again made her really nostalgic and remember all the good memories she had in that place. She says that whatever it is, it seems like it's something important that Suzume has to do no matter what, and she can relate to that. Suzume is happy that Chika understands her, and the two go to bed. In the morning, Suzume sees on her phone that the cat has made it all the way to Kobe. She tries to wake up Soda, but he doesn't move or say anything. Suzume tries to take the chance to kiss him but then stops and wonders where his mouth even is on the chair. Suddenly, Soda wakes up, and Suzume tells him the cat is in Kobe and they have to get going. She thanks Chika and her family for all they've done, and the two promise to keep in touch. A sudden downpour occurs, and the two take refuge under a bus stop. The next bus won't come for a long time, so the two think about what they should do. At that moment, a good Samaritan, Rumi Ninomiya, notices Suzume alone and stops her car. In the back of the car are the woman's two young children who Rumi checks her phone and says she's in trouble because her babysitter canceled last minute and she has to work in a couple hours, and then looks at Suzume. Next, we see Suzume getting worn out trying to keep the kids entertained. Suzume is out of her element. Soda springs into action and starts acting like a robot chair. Suzume says it's a robot toy chair and the kids take turns riding on Soda as he walks around the room. After the kids fall asleep, Suzume goes downstairs and Rumi asks for Suzume's help as the bar is really busy. The cat sees Suzume and exits out the front door. Suzume says she needs to step out for a minute and runs after the cat. She yells for Soda who jumps out the second floor window. The two chase after the cat and see the familiar Mimizu smoke rising from an abandoned amusement park in the mountains. Once they arrive, they see the source of the Mimizu is a door on one of the carts on an old Ferris wheel. Soda says he'll go after the cat while Suzume seals the door. Suzume makes for the Ferris wheel cart and starts pushing the door closed. Meanwhile, Soda chases the cat and the two land near the amusement park generators. The cat does some magic and the generator powers up, causing the park to come to life. However, the Ferris wheel also starts turning, and Suzume struggles to stay on the outside of the cart as it rises into the air. She takes a step into the cart, and she sees the scene she saw the first time she opened a door a celestial night sky, a lush green hill, and what appears to be her as a child with her deceased mother. In a trance, she steps closer to the scene and calls out to her mother. Soda finally catches up with the cat. At that moment, he sees that Suzume is in trouble. Suzume thinks she's walking into a lush field, when in reality she has stepped into the Ferris wheel cart, and taking a step further will cause her to fall out of the cart on the other side. Soda leaves the cat and runs toward the Ferris wheel. Suzume locks it and the two relax. The cat runs off again and the two of them decide to sit in the Ferris wheel cart until it comes back down to the ground. Suzume tells Soda what she saw on the other side. When they get back to the snack bar, Rumi comes out and hugs Suzume, saying she shouldn't go out alone at this time of night. Rumi, Suzume, and the hostess have dinner together. Before bed, Suzume sees she has 50 messages from Tamaki. Tamaki decides she has to track Suzume down and bring her back on her own. That night, Suzume lies down on the booth for bed, and Sota tells her that he's a fourth-eighth-year university student who wants to become a teacher. 
However, he missed the teacher's exam because of the situation they were in. Suzume is surprised, and the two chat until they both fall asleep. When Soda falls asleep that night, we see that his soul is falling further and further away from the real world, likely because of what the cat has done to his body. When he falls asleep, it's like he sinks into a different world, and he sits on a deserted beach on Suzume's chair. The next day, Rumi drops Suzume off at the train station. Suzume and Soda take the bullet train back to Tokyo, as Soda says he has books in his apartment he needs to see. On the train, Suzume falls asleep and gets angry at Soda for not waking her up when they passed Mitfuji. She really wanted to see it. When they get back to Tokyo, Soda guides her to his apartment in Ochanomizu. His place is above a loss and convenience store. In his apartment, Soda shows Suzume a book that explains the history of the Mimizu and the sealing stones that are used to seal the Mimizu away. The Mimizu are entities that bring calamity to the earth, such as earthquakes. He said there is one stone in Kyushu, her hometown, and one in Tokyo. He explains that his family has always been tasked with sealing away the Mimizu when they appear. After Soda is done explaining, they think of their next plan of action when there is a knock at the door. It is Soda's friend, Serizawa. He appears to have a key to the apartment and barges in. Soda pretends to be a chair again, and Suzume says she is Soda's cousin. Serizawa says he's looking for Soda and to contact him when Soda returns. Then the earthquake warning blares on Serizawa and Suzume's smartphone. Suzume looks outside and sees the Mimizu is incredibly close. She grabs Soda and runs out of the apartment, leaving Serizawa behind. The two of them run across a busy highway and see train tracks below them. They see that the source is underground, below the train tracks. Soda notices that the Mimizu is different this time, more powerful somehow. By this time, the Mimizu has already grown very large, far larger than the ones they've encountered so far. And because the source seems to be underground, it'll be hard to find the door and close it in time. In desperation, Soda jumps into the Mimizu, leaving Suzume behind. And without hesitation, she jumps off the bridge. To the onlookers who can't see the Mimizu, it appears as if she just jumped off a bridge to commit suicide. Meanwhile, the Mimizu continues to grow larger into a huge spiral disc covering all of Tokyo. Then the cat appears in the sky and tells them if the Mimizu falls, lots of people will die. Suzume and Sota are at a loss for what to do when the cat does something to Soda and his chair body begins to freeze over and get covered in ice. Soda realizes he's about to die and says he didn't think this is where it would end. After he just met Suzume, he didn't think his life would end here. With those as his final words, the chair becomes completely frozen in ice. Suzume yells for Soda and the cat says there is no need to cry, as that is not Soda anymore. It has become the sealing stone that can seal this Mimizu away. The impact causes her to pass out and the cat catches her and transforms its body into a soft cushion, protecting Suzume from the fall. Suzume's clothes are torn and her shoes are gone, but she is otherwise unharmed. When Suzume wakes, she is underground in a strange cave-like area with shallow water. In that area, she sees a shrine-like gate. On the other side of the gate, she sees Sota in his chair form, covered in ice and shoved into the ground atop a hill. She calls out to him, but he can't hear her. She runs to him, but is unable to enter. The cat appears again and Suzume grabs him hard, asking him to turn Soda back. The cat says she's hurting him and that he just wanted to play with her. The cat asks Suzume if she likes after hearing that Suzume hates him. The cat's demeanor changes completely and it loses the glint in its eyes. It doesn't talk anymore. And when it walks away, it appears as if it were any other ordinary cat. Before closing the shrine gate and locking it, Suzume vows to rescue Sota. Suzume finds the exit and ends up in a highway tunnel. She makes her way out and sneaks into the hospital that Soda's uncle is currently admitted. When the coast is clear, she enters his room and explains the situation. The uncle says there is no way to save Soda, and she should continue her life and forget everything she's seen. She presses on and says she has to save him. The uncle says that she could really die, and asks her if she's scared. She says that she is scared, but she's even more scared of a world without Soda in it. The uncle laughs and tells her that the only way to get him back is to go to the place that she sees on the other side of the gates. Determined, she knows where she has to go, to her childhood hometown in Miyagi. She goes back to Soda's apartment and puts on her clean uniform and she makes her way to Ochanomizu station. Coincidentally, Soda's friend Serizawa is sitting in his car in front of the station and spots Suzume. He calls out to her and asks where Soda is. She says she doesn't have time to talk and tries to get away but he grabs her hand wanting more of an explanation. Just then, Tamaki arrives and sees them. 
She misunderstands the situation and thinks Serizawa is some playboy that has been taking Suzumi around all these places. Tamaki grabs her hand and tries to take her home, but she pushes Tamaki away and jumps in Serizawa's car. But Tamaki jumps in too. As the three of them argue, they hear a voice in the back seat that says, Shut up. They turn and see the cat staring back at them. Seeing a cat talk snaps them out of their frenzy. Suzume takes this chance to tell them that there's a place she has to go no matter what immediately. And reluctantly, Tamaki and Serizawa agree to take her where she wants to go. They decide to stop at a rest stop to get out of the rain and get something to eat. Tamaki calls her friend and co-worker and explains the situation. The friend says it's dangerous to drive around with some guy neither of them know and that they should hop on a bus back home now. The friend searches the rest area and says there are tickets they can buy and get on the next bus back home. Tamaki goes back to the car to try to persuade Suzume to go home, but Suzume rejects her quite forcefully. She says that she never asked Tamaki to come get her and that she should leave her alone. Tamaki gets angry and seemingly possessed by some devil. She says horrible things to Suzume. She says that she never asked to be the one to take care of her and that because she had to take in a young girl, she was held back in her career and in her love life. She yells at Suzume, asking her to give her all that time back. Suzume realizes this isn't her aunt, and behind her she sees a large black cat with yellow glowing eyes. The cat seems to be possessing Tamaki. The Daijin white cat jumps up and hisses at the black cat. She falls to the ground. Suzume gets out of the car and tries to get Tamaki to wake up. Tamaki wakes up, apologizes, and runs into the rest stop. Serizawa asks her what is wrong, and Tamaki starts crying. She says she just said some horrible things that she can't take back. The next day we see them on the road again. On the way to Suzume's home, the cat speaks again, and Serizawa and Tamaki definitely hear it this time. This distracts Serizawa, causing him to nearly hit an oncoming car. He swerves off the road and into a ditch. Everyone is okay, but the car is immobile. Tamaki finds an old bike nearby, and she catches up to Suzume and tells her to hop on, and the cats hop into the basket of the bike. Tamaki apologizes for what she said at the rest stop and says she didn't mean it. She says she isn't sure what's going on, but she knows it's important. And Suzume digs up a time capsule in the backyard. It has a notebook she used to doodle in, and she says she remembers drawing the scene in her childhood that she sees on the other side of the gate. Finally, the last page of the notebook shows a star-filled night sky, and Suzume next to a door. She grabs the page and stares at it, and runs off with the cats close behind. The white cat calls out to Suzume, and they find a toppled-over door in frame. She opens the door and sees the familiar scene of a star-filled night sky and prepares to jump through, when Tamaki catches up to them. Tamaki asks where she's going, and Suzume says she's going to the one she loves. She jumps through and sees the largest Mimizu she's ever seen. In the air, the black cat turns into a giant white tiger and starts to fight the Mimizu. Suzume and the white cat land in a devastated area. Ruins of houses are burning. There are boats on top of ruined houses and crumbling buildings. She sees a hill and soda frozen on top of it. They reach soda and Suzume tries to pull her out, but her hands begin to freeze as soon as she touches him. The cat warns her that if she removes him, there will be no ceiling stone to keep the Mimizu in place and it'll be released into the world again. Suzume says she doesn't care and that she will become the ceiling stone and take soda place. The cat sees Suzume's resolve as she tries desperately to free Sota while her own arms begin to freeze over. Suzume and the cat manage to pull Sota out and they all tumble down the hill. Sota is in his human form and they wake up looking at each other, remembers the cat and sees him lying unconscious nearby. She runs over to the cat and picks it up, crying and asking if the cat is okay. The cat seems to be dying and says there is no greater feeling than being in Suzume's warm hands. Suzume blinks and the white cat becomes the cat-like statue that she pulled from the ground at the first gate she opened. Suzume realizes that the cat was the ceiling stone all along. Suzume and Sota wait for the Mimizu to come near them and they jump onto it. Suzume seals the Mimizu away and the large white cat disappears too. Suzume looks and sees herself as a little child, crying and looking for her mother. Suzume walks up to her childhood self and baby Suzume asks her if she's seen her mother. Baby Suzume says that her mother worked at a hospital so she was working when the tsunami and earthquake hit. She can't find her, but her mother must be worried sick about her. Baby Suzume is frantic and crying. Suzume at first tries to calm her down, but can't. Then she remembers the chair. She picks up the chair and gives it to her childhood self, telling her that things are going to be okay. She says she knows what she's going through, but she's going to be okay in the end. Baby Suzume takes the chair and opens a door at the top of the hill. Before she walks through, she sees Suzume and Soda standing at the bottom of the hill. After that, 
Present time Suzume and Soda go back through their own gate. Suzume no Tojimari ends with Soda saying he needs to go and make sure there are no more gates, but that he'll definitely visit her again. Life returns to normal for all the characters and Suzume bikes to school in the morning.